here. Hey guys, welcome to my creative living show here. And look, bad news, something got into my kale. Guess what it was? Deer, because rabbits can't fly. Well, I'm gonna start out in my garden today where I'm doing a lot of weeding. And I'll tell you what, this oscillating hoe is amazing and it's a great workout, but not too much of a workout. So don't think you can skip out of your cardio today. It's super easy to do, as you can tell. You just run it across the soil here, put a little muscle into it. It's great for the grass and early weeds, but the deeper root weeds, this isn't gonna get that, obviously. But once you get that pulled up like this, bring those scraps out, and then you're ready to mulch. And the mulch usually helps block from the new weed starting again. Now here it is, this is the tool. I've had this corner tool for quite a few years. They actually sponsored me a while back, and this definitely is one of my favorites. It's the isolating hoe and uh, it's a keeper for sure. I use this pretty much all summer long. It's a great way to get the weeds out without having to spray chemicals and now I got lots more to do and plenty of mulch to spread and uh, I hope you'll check this out. These are great. These are great tools. Ah, look who's back this year. Evil little critters you are. Japanese beetle. But look how beautiful my, oh my goodness, I've never seen that before. Look at this, a Japanese beetle on my hydrangea. What the heck? Go, you little stinker. He'll come back. But look how beautiful the hydrangeas are blooming. A few of them. My limelight's not blooming yet, but won't be long. Just walk through here and show you. Another one of my favorites is the... Well, here's my Joe Pie weed. Oh, look! I have a sweet pea coming up. I planted those years ago. The rate it's like twining itself up into the Joe Pie weed. <laughs> Very pretty. But look, I call it the grandmother of all hydrangeas. Of course, it's the oak leaf. Oak leaf. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful look. I love this one. Awesome. So the knockouts are done just in time for the beetle to come and attack it. But my beautiful new hydrangea, this was a new one from uh, Monrovia. And I didn't even have to do anything to the soil. And it turned blue. You know, they like they like the uh, pH messed with to get the blue. But this variety is blue on its own. Very exciting. And I can't wait for all my beautiful... Rose of Sharon's, Rose of Sharon, <laughs> row. It is a row, Rose of Sharon, to bloom. But I need to get in there and mulch first, and possibly set some beetle traps because man, there's a lot of them this year. Look at this, ah! And this is super awesome. But I've got plenty of milkweed up in this border. Um, oh look, there's a wasp enjoying it. But oh, and a little ladybug. <laughs> After flipping a few leaves around, I think I may have found something. So I used a new app on my phone to message a author friend of mine named Kylie Balmley. She just wrote a book all about monarchs, and I was super excited to hear what she had to say. Here is the short video clip I sent her on the app. It's super bright, but I think I found a monarch egg right here on milkweed. I got lots of milk, lots of milkweed, and a bouquet. Here is the audio message author Kylie Baumley responded with. Hey, Bren, that's cool. It does, from here, it does look like a monarch egg. Um, make sure when you look at it really closely, see if it is oval and that there are some vertical ridges that come down from the top. I know it's really hard to see because they're so tiny, but um, that will confirm that. I have often been fooled by a crack in the leaf that has seeped out some of the 
sap and it dries and it often looks like a, an egg and it's not but that from here does look like a monarch egg keep an eye on it it only it'll only take three to five days for that to hatch out and then you'll know for sure let me know kind of looks like it how exciting beautiful plant this is just one that comes up naturally here in my garden in northwest ohio Hey, Olivia. Olivia, come here. Hi, Olivia. Want to go get some lunch? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Okay, this next section of the show is my absolute favorite because it involves food and I love to eat. And I also am trying hard to make better choices, especially when I'm out working really hard during the day. Like today, all this weeding and mulching I did, it's so easy to go in the house and make bad choices, bad food choices, bad drink choices. So what I have shared with you today is a simple chicken Asian wrap meal it's basically a meal you can make it ahead of time put it in the fridge and eat and enjoy when you need it instead of having to go in and snacking on things you shouldn't so here is one of my favorite recipes today i'm putting together a quick asian chicken wrap you'll need two to three cups of broccoli slaw or you can use a bag of the asian salad mix you can find in your produce section at most uh, grocery stores you'll need a half a cup of chow mein noodles a fourth cup of roasted sunflower seeds one cup of chopped rotisserie chicken one third cup of slivered almonds and of course some sweet asian dressing which if you get the pre-made asian salad mix most of these ingredients are included in the pack so all you're going to do is put it together mix it mix it all up it doesn't matter what you add in the bowl first uh, preferably do the salad dressing last mix it up really good and get those wraps ready. I'm going to use a spinach wrap today. I love these. They're super good. Big shout out to Aldi's. They're one of my favorite places to shop because they have this new spinach wrap. I love it. It seems to be a little thicker and holds together much better when you wrap, especially the chicken Asian mix here. So scoop up about a cup, maybe two cups of the mix. And you're basically going to fold these just like you would a bean burrito or any other type of burrito. Close up the end. And don't be afraid to wrap this nice and tight because you don't want it falling apart. The dressing will kind of help hold, stick it together. <laughs> and um, you can put these in a container or you can wrap them up in saran wrap and keep them in your fridge for I don't know, two or three days. Ours are usually gone in a day. They're so good. Oh my goodness, look at this weed. Ugh, ugh. That's my job for tomorrow. But uh, hey, so you'll have to comment and let me know. What did you think of the chicken wrap? Have you made one of these before? I'd love to hear your recipe. So be sure to connect with me and share, share some comments. Well, my kale's gone in the first box, but I can always cut it back. And crazy enough, it didn't, the deer didn't make its way all the way up here to the other window with loaded with romaine and pansies and nasturtium, which in the back container, he didn't touch the coleus or the pansies. So it's kind of interesting to see what the deer chooses to eat. But anyways, it's time to plant new in the boxes anyways, because summer's approaching. And maybe once fall comes, that kale that I cut back that the deer enjoyed will be sprouting back up and be pretty for the cooler months. I'll probably end up using a lot of begonias and I love all the different potato vines that are available and of course my coleus and nasturtium is always fun. I've been dodging Boo Kitty who's been napping in three leaves leave it be poison ivy. Lucky Boo he's not allergic to it but watch out for that fur folks. 
Well, thanks for joining me on my show today. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to connect with me at my website at brenhaas.com. And I look forward to bringing more fun, creative ideas to you throughout the summer. So until next time, I hope you get out in the garden.